All right, hello everybody, this is Luke. Um, today we're doing a review of this DCB094 DeWalt USB-C battery charger. Um, it cost $100, what I paid for it on Amazon, and that seemed to be the best price that you could get it at anywhere. Uh, in the kit, it comes with a belt clip, which I don't have installed currently. This 100 watt rated USB-C uh, cable and the 65 watt rated uh, charging brick. One thing that I do have to say about the charging brick is that it does not, the little prongs don't fold back into it like you see on most uh, charging bricks. And it's also not 100 watts, which is what uh, the maximum power input rating for this uh, device is. So if you wanna use this device and charge your batteries faster, you're gonna to have to buy a separate power bit. I got this one for $20 on Amazon and it came with a longer USB-C cable and it works great. Um, but I just thought I'd go over some of the functionality of this device and explain that it really does work and it does meet all its expectations and claims and I'm happy with it. So um, here I have a 100 amp hour DeWalt battery. Uh, I think it's, it's partially charged. It's got uh, two bars on it right now. And I will show you that it does indeed charge the battery at the uh, claimed 100 watt rating. So to do that, I can't use this power brick that it came with. I have to use this uh, larger power rated brick. And we're gonna show it the battery in here. And it takes it a little bit to, oh, nope, it bumped right up there to 99 watts. So that's, uh, that's a true story right there. I think the highest power rated uh, DeWalt battery charger there is out there right now is 160 watts. Um, and this of course will taper down the charging as it gets closer to full, so around 80% or 70% it'll start uh, charging slower. But this is pretty good because you know at 100 amp hour, or at 100 watts, it'll charge this 100 amp hour or 100 watt hour battery. Uh, you know, in an hour, of course, it'll, in actuality, it'll take a little bit longer than that because it can't charge at full speed the closer it gets to full, but you can get to 70% in under an hour. Um, so another thing that is really useful for this device is that uh, you can charge it, right, with any power brick that you have. So the 65 watt power brick that has a meter on it works well. You can charge it with the one it came with. Um, let's see, is that truly a 65 watt power brick? We'll find out here and yes so right now with a partially charged battery at full wide open right there you're only getting 67.7 watts so again if you want to charge it at full speed you got to use a bigger power brick but one nice thing that I have also confirmed about this device is if you don't have, say you lost this one or you left it at home or you're on a job site and you only have some nice phone charger, this, the maximum voltage output of this uh, particular B-Link or Belkin uh, USB-C charger I got at Walmart for around $10, only outputs uh, 11 volts or 11.1 11, 11 .1 or whatever. Um, and it actually will charge... Uh, charge it too at only 11 volts so that's pretty impressive um, let's see so as far as the discharge uh, power rating goes it claims uh, an output of 100 watt or 5 amps at 20 volts which I went ahead and bought a special adapter for my Dell laptop uh, this laptop comes with a 180 watt charger but with this adapter uh, it tells the computer to, to ramp down its expectations and it can charge the computer at 85 watts with USB-C. So I'll plug that in here and plug that on here and then we'll plug our USB-C power meter into here and do this like this, right? And it fluctuates around but it, it, it can put out a constant uh, 85 watts and I think that's just because that's what the computer calls for. So right now it's drawing 85 watts, and, and like I said, I think that's because um, the, the USB-C protocol, it's not asking for more, but I believe this particular unit could put out 100 watts. Um, another thing is that you can use it with even the smaller 26-watt-hour uh, batteries or, you know, the larger batteries. They all work the same. You plug it in. 
and gotta unplug it and plug it back in. This one's dead. Let's see. Yep, oh, there it goes. Yep, and it's charging at uh, 85 watts. So um, works with the smaller batteries. You can also charge your iPhone with it. Um, it works at the voltages it claims, which is the uh, 20 volts, uh, 5 through 15 volts, and uh, from the just the USB A. You can output 2.4 amps at 5 volts. So, you'd be able to charge your iPhone many times with this power battery uh, or this battery. And you can also charge your laptop, which is nice. You don't have to have a plug anywhere nearby if you have enough batteries and, and you're working remote. Um, yeah, so that works for that too. And um, that's about uh, all I have to say about it. It meets all its claims. It works very well. It's a lot lighter than having to carry around, you know, a bulk of charger with the cord and everything. And another reason why I really like it is because when I go on road trips and stuff, I only have to bring this one power brick to charge my drill, my laptop, my phone, my watch, everything else. It's just this one power adapter as opposed to having however many power adapters you used to have to have. So that's it. Okay, uh, so now we're going to tear this apart and see what it's made of what it looks like inside um i can tell you that if you want to do this if you're playing along at home uh you don't need to take out these two screws so these two screws on the black uh part just hold the bottom clamshell together that you know has this uh the terminals on it uh, if you want to look at the uh, circuit board all you got to do is take out these four uh, security torques uh, TX10 screws. Um, not sure why they go with the security torques versus the regular torques, but they did. Uh, I really like this Weira kit too. It comes with the small sockets and all the bits. It seems like every kit you get, you get uh, a set of Torx bits and a set of security Torx bits, which everybody has a security torx bit what's what's the point of it i think we can just get rid of that but we take these off and then if anybody cares to guess what uh, wire gauge they think is going to the main uh, battery terminals on this thing go ahead and guess now so this th top thing comes off, it's got a little brass, uh, looks like heat staked nut uh, in the molding there. This is, uh, it says PC ABS polycarbonate slash ABS plastic. Um, so on the top, you see this giant glob of uh, goo paste stuff. It's not sticky, so I think it's just to keep these two uh, I don't know what this thing's to, but I think it's to keep them from moving around. Um, there are the lights. Uh, you can definitely tell that it's got con conformal coating on it, which is nice, so it won't corrode if it gets wet. It won't corrode as easily if it gets wet. Um, there's no goo on the small uh, capacitors or on the uh, you know spot where you plug it in, which is probably going to be the most likely thing that breaks on this device, but. It does feel solid. Um, these things have been welded in, or soldered in there uh, well. Uh, you can see the bottom soldering job on that, all the little pads, and uh, how that's attached. And then it looks like they got this uh, capped on uh, ribbon cable that goes to each cell and uh, gives a temperature probe. And then they got, uh, what was it? 16 gauge, uh, 16 American wire gauge wire uh, that goes to the battery terminals. And it looks like they got a little crimp on there that goes through the via in the circuit board. And that's been soldered on there and I don't see anything really bad about that. Um, yeah, overall it looks pretty simple, which is good. And it's got the conformal coating on it, which is good. And they put some of that goo on there to keep these things from falling off, I guess, which is good. 
Uh, there's no heat heat sink, but uh, like I said, I think the most likely thing to break on this is going to be where you plug it in, which is usually what happens. So that's it.